Good morning. Lovely to have you all with us. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you're well. We woke up to snow today in Edinburgh, so it's very wintry. It looked like a, a scene from a movie. It's lovely. So I um, hope you're cosy and staying inside. Um, today we are back cooking, of course. We've got some great recipes from you, for you from Livia. Uh, we are going to be learning all the secrets of how to make a great pesto sauce. And today we've also got our cookbook giveaway. And today we are going to be giving away this amazing, lovely cookbook, uh, Midnight Chicken and other recipes worth living for. So if you'd like to win the cookbook, then please pop your name in the comments below and we'll pick a winner at the end of the show. So let's see where Olivia is and watch us cooking. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm here hello. in very sunny Emilia Romagna today and very warm, so completely yeah. the opposite of Edinburgh. As you can see, there's a lot of sun and I was thinking about shutting down, I mean, closing the window. Yeah, <laughs> so you can see see. It's spring arrived yeah. in Italy. Yeah, I mean, here, yeah, it's very windy, so I don't know if it's a good sign, but... Mm. It's very warm, quite warm, a bit strange, yeah. but it will be fine. Okay. How are you? Did you have a good week? Yeah, we had a really nice weekend, yeah. Lots of rugby, watched, watched rugby weekends, some good results for Scotland, so that was perfect. Um, <laughs> okay. And we were watching Italy playing at Stadio Olimpico and remembering that we were there last year and looking forward to being back there again, which was mm. great. And yeah, today okay. woke up to lots and lots of snow. It's really, yeah, it's very, very Che nice. bello! Beautiful. Yeah, That's the way winter should be, you know, like not warm like here. I know, already. exactly. Perfect. <laughs> so strange. listen, Olivia, tell us today, what are you cooking for us today? Ecco, allora, today we are going to do pesto, as someone has request. I think That's Minette. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, actually, I'm glad she has asked for it, because mm -hmm. I really, I've learned a lot of things filming someone while he was making pesto a while ago. Uh, there are many ways to make pesto, so I will tell you what the difference are between using a blender or uh, uh, using a mortar, you know, the main difference. And we're going to do two different kinds of pesto, just to complicate a little bit more our <laughs> life <laughs> for half an hour, <laughs> like I always do. So yeah. we're going to make a, rock, a rucola. Can I say rucola? I prefer yeah, it to rocket. Yeah, <laughs> a rucola pesto. Okay, that we will serve or we show how to serve it on a slice of bread. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And we are going to show how to cook the pesto uh, with uh, the traditional pasta from Liguria, which is uh, uh, with trofie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I'm glad I found the trofiette, which are the small uh, trofie, uh, which are perfect for pesto and they are the original shape. I will show mm -hmm. you. And uh, we will boil it. In, we boil the pasta with, uh, in water with some green beans and potatoes, which is the traditional mm -hmm. way they do uh, in, uh, in Liguria or in Genova area, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I got here all the ingredients ready. I will start boiling the green beans and the potato because they need to be a bit cooked, you know, by the time I add the pasta to the water. So I already have some water on and um, I'm going to start. So, but any time uh, someone has something to ask, please feel free to ask. Okay, yeah, yeah, stop me, Lauren. Yeah, lots okay. of, um, like some nice messages as well. Linda's saying it's snowing in the Peak District, gosh. And so yes, I'm not too pleased we're doing, we're doing pesto, which was requested from last week as well. And um, can I just say something about this really lovely cookbook while Olivia's doing that? Um, yep. Yeah, this is a really, really lovely cookbook um, written by um, a lady who was just having a bit of a tough time and food was just her, her salvation, really. It just kept her going. And she's written this really interesting book with lots of lovely memories. And she's got a really nice, there's a really lovely part here that I've just I had. I had um, yeah, she says, it's, um, it's the kind of cooking that makes everything feel okay. And it's the kind of cooking that saved my life. So yeah, a really lovely book. And that's the book that we're giving away today. So if anyone would like it, then just pop your name in the comments below. So yeah, really nice book. I read it last night. So great. Yeah, perfect. So ready okay. to test. Okay, so now uh, we will start from the more difficult part, which is the um, pesto made in the mortar. And uh, I will list you the ingredients and I will explain you how we use them and um, which one we have picked. So there are seven ingredients for the traditional Genova pesto. And uh, I got them here. So for sure, the most important one is basil. Okay. The variety of basil, if you produce the real traditional pesto from Genova, should be il 
Basilico di Pra. Pra is, a, let's say we can consider it like a suburb of Genova, so not far away from Genova. You have to know that Liguria is along the coast, okay, is a, um, let's say a line, I don't know, of a, a coastline, okay, which got a beautiful weather, really good, because it's uh, got a lot of influence from the sea. And uh, for that reason, they produce a lot of herbs. So if you are interested in good quality herbs, you should buy them from there. And uh, they are especially famous for basil. The basil that we uh, usually use when we make pesto la genovese is not exactly this one, because I'm not from Genova, and I always tell you that the right recipes should be done just where uh, they come from. So the best quality of the ingredients and the right one are for sure uh, just in the place where they are produced. So my pesto, my basil is not exactly the pra um, variety, but we are looking for tiny, small, very tender, and quite sweet basil leaves. So not the big one that usually you can find most of the time in the south of Italy, much bigger than these. Actually, I got one here that I skipped. You know, I kept it off because I thought they were too big. These are too big. They are older, and they are not as sweet as the tender one, okay, uh, as the younger one. So the best way would be to buy it in a market in Genova, in a food market, where they sell them with the root, okay? And you just tear them out. <laughs> I know. And like, that's why... Uh, or, or we yeah. I know. <laughs> so that's why I think it's always, you know, nice to do seasonal dishes, because actually mm -hmm. here, you can find them when it is basil time. So a little bit later in the season, from spring until end of summer, you could find good quality of basil leaves. Anyway, about, let's say, 30 grams of basil leaves, but I will show you the amount, you know, by using my hands, your hands. Mm -hmm. Then we need uh, um, a good quality of pinoli, pine nuts. Okay, and for this reason, I, I brought here two kinds, just to make the comparison between these two. Now I'm going to, I think you can see them, if they're focused. Okay, one is long and thin, and the other one is round and fat. Okay, the round and fat one comes from China, and uh, it's very different, different quality, different kind of oils inside. So it would be much better to use the more expensive ones that are local and come from the Mediterranean area. So especially from Tuscany would be the best one, so this long one. In this case, I'm going to mix them because... <laughs> I didn't have enough, you know, of just one kind, but don't worry, just, I'm just trying to tell you what you should do to be right. Then uh, the other ingredients, very important, are two kinds of cheeses. One is parmigiano, should be from 18 months older, so it should be quite an old one, and more tasty, stronger flavor, and a pecorino, pecorino sardo. The quantities of these cheeses grated are in this proportion, two-thirds, one-third, let's say. Okay, so much more, more parmigiano, and uh, less of pecorino, which have quite strong flavor. Mm -hmm. It's important to keep these two kinds of cheeses in the recipe because it makes a big difference if you use a basic no flavor and no taste parmigiano uh, that you can buy already grated. Okay. It would be much better to grate your own, and in this case, I've grated my <laughs> pecorino and my parmigiano. Mm -hmm. Okay, then um, another very the, important... Yeah, yeah um, sorry. Queen's, on, Queen's man in the Facebook chat is going to pop up the recipes as well, because we've got the recipes, if anyone's looking for them, both for our, both types of pesto as well. So, Yeah, just. perfect. Okay, so we got the recipe, and in the recipe there are all the ingredients listed exactly, you know. Uh, and, and the recipe is from uh, the champion of the... Um, I mean, it, it was one of the finalists of the championship of pesto making in Genova that we are filming with Pasta Grani, so Maurizio. And he's a friend now, and um, we talk very often, and he has shown me how to make the real pesto. Another very important ingredient is garlic. So pesto without garlic doesn't exist. If you don't like garlic, you should not have pesto, because it's a completely different quality of pesto. Actually, if you want to cross someone from Liguria, you should say, I like pesto, but without garlic. <laughs> They will get very angry. Okay, so I'm going to start another, sorry, the, the last ingredient, but very important, is rock salt. Usually the rock salt that Mauricio uses is from um, Trapani, okay? So it's yeah, rock salt. This is not from Trapani, it's from Cervia. It's another salina that we got here. It is very important that, because it helps while you are mixing the ingredients and mm, using the pesto, 
and also it gives more flavor. So it's one of the seven ingredients, seven ingredients that we're going to use. Okay, now I'm going to start. You can say whatever you like. Um, <laughs> So you can. That's great, Chris. Okay, but I'm just, you know, I'm just going to start from the garlic and then the salt and then mm -hmm. the pine nuts. Yeah. Okay, the basil and then the pine nuts. Yeah, and can I just ask you, Livia, when you, you've obviously decided on the pasta, is there any reason why you've chosen that pasta for your pesto? Trofie are the traditional pasta from Liguria. Actually, yeah, trofie are, um, originally were called gnocchetti. Okay, so they were the traditional pasta from there, pasta from there invented in Liguria, and they are perfect for, uh, for the pesto. I'm taking uh, the green uh, shoot. Off. That's very important. It would make your pesto more bitter and also easier to digest. So it is important to eliminarlo. Okay. I'm using actually quite a big uh, piece of um, garlic, maybe smaller could have been good because I'm not making a big quantity. So don't exaggerate with garlic, but use it for sure. Okay. So uh, the way to use a mortar, there are many different kinds of mortars. Uh, usually the marble one, um, it's from uh, with marble from Massa Carrara, so from Tuscany. Okay, and um, a mortar is uh, these ears that you can see here, okay, which are used to keep turning uh, the mortar around uh, because it would help uh, the rotative movement will help uh, the ingredient to be meshed better. Uh, this is il pestello. Il pestello, in this case, mine is with olive wood. The best kind of wood you should use for a pestello is pear wood, the pera, because it's harder, it lasts longer, it doesn't absorb much of the flavor. Okay. While you use a mortar, even if il, il mortaio, uh, il pestello, it's called this way because pestare in Italian means crush, most of the time we're going to use a mortar not crushing, but rotating the element towards the, um, the pareti, the, the side okay, of the motor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay so that... maybe it will be a little bit noisy. You can yeah. do... So I will have to try to transform it into a paste. Yeah. You can actually crush yeah, it the some really green bits. Yeah, it's really interesting, Livia, that you're not bashing it. You're actually just making a circular motion. Yeah, you are not um, actually... Instead, you're, you're crushing the, the garlic and you are crushing, uh, usually crushing the garlic and crushing the pine nuts, but you absolutely don't crush the uh, basil because it would uh, kill uh, the oil that are in the surface of the leaves, under the leaves of the basil. So you help yourself. Uh, you have to go um, the other way around. So my hands turn the mortar this side and my circular rotation goes the other one way around. Clockwise, one goes anti-clockwise. And you see, even if I'm not crushing it, okay, okay, it's already becoming like a paste. So the purpose is to make the garlic disappear. And completely melted. Beginning, at the beginning, obviously, you crush it. You pound. Do you say pound? Pound. Yeah, no, you pound it. Why is more, more using more force? I think you don't want to use force on it. You just want okay. to. You see, that's the yeah. the garlic disappeared in a little paste. Okay. Now it's time to add a, a few pieces of rock salt. My rock salt is quite uh, thin, so that could be enough. Okay, I need this one. And I kind of I can let's say crash these. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the ingredients, apart from the pine nuts, that can be crushed too. The rest and of the ingredients are more delicate. Yeah. You see, now the salt have disappeared already. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there any and now, reason? Is there any yeah. reason that why you've you've crushed the garlic first and then the salt, and, and for example, not put the pine nuts in now? Is there a reason behind the the sequencing? Yes, um, yeah, the salt will help the color of the basil leaves to stay uh, more green. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And uh, also, it helps something that is quite tough to be um, crushed faster. Okay, so 
I like to use it at the beginning. I've learned how to use it at the beginning. You can add it also during while you're crushing the pine nuts. That will help the pine nuts to crush faster. So now it's time to add the basil leaves that I kept here. The more tender bits of the basil. My basil is not exactly the right one. So, I mean, the very, sure very delicious. small new shoots. Sorry? I said, I'm sure it'll taste delicious. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, very <yum. laughs> Well, my mother will like it anyway, because that's the only thing she will eat today. So. <laughs> oh, good to keep mum happy. That's good. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm adding it little by little. I'm mm -hmm. going to add the pine to use the pine nuts to absorb the excess liquid that came out from the smashing of the basil. And if somebody doesn't have a mortal and pestle, Olivia, uh, would it be allowed to put it into the processor or is that absolutely not allowed at all? Sure, <laughs> sure they are allowed to use the food processor. I can tell you what is good and what is wrong with it. So you should pay attention to use a food processor, um, an immersion one, because that one has the engine uh, that doesn't warm the container where you make the pizza. Oh, okay. The problem of the heat of the engine that activates the food processor, I left the stalk, I'm going to take it off, sorry. Okay. Um, the heat makes, give uh, the, the pesto, um, the basil leaves a, a darker color because of the heat of the mortar of the um, machine, you know, the engine doesn't help in the color. So to keep the color of the green leaves bright and green and not dark and black, you should pull down if you don't have an immersion blender or food processor, but if you have a, a, a mixer, you should cool down the container where you're going to blend the ingredients uh, before using it. That way the cold temperature will uh, uh, help the basil not to become black. Mm. Okay. I'm using a spatula too, but I would like to show you how it has completely disappeared. And it seems also is really a small amount, but you will see it will come up to me a lot. Yeah, not much at all. Seems like it's very little. Now we are adding the pine nuts, okay, that will absorb the liquid, the excess liquid, you know, the kind of liquid that has been produced. Let's say it's three, um, about three uh, spoon, tab small tablespoon, or you can say small tab tablespoon, or uh, let's say a big teaspoon, but not a big tablespoon of pine nuts. Okay. Mm -hmm. In this case, I can crush a little bit. I can, uh, non so se appunto si dice pound, or comunque I can pestare a little bit. You see the color of the pesto is ch changing into yeah. um, less uh, dark. But it's still keeping the color. And, and did you say that they, obviously there's, there's oil coming out the pine nuts as well? Yes, it's, it's all absorbed by the pine nuts and it's all. Um, mixed well. So a pesto made with a mortar is much more um, creamy than a pesto made with a mixer. Yeah. You can make a pesto with an immersion blender, you can make it with uh, a mixer, you can make it with uh, a mezzaluna, you can dice it with a knife. Obviously it takes a long time and uh, um, the result is less Thin. The traditional way to do it is using a mortar and keep turning the mortar around like I'm doing for uh, everything to be meshed. No, I don't know if I can say meshed, crushed to the right way. Yeah, okay, so now as you can see, the color has completely changed. Completely changed. I can almost okay. smell it. <laughs> yeah, there's a garlic, <laughs> for sure, garlic. Fine, as basil, obviously, when it's in season, it's perfect. Okay, now we're going to add the two different cheeses. And I got a spoon here to show you the amount. Okay, so I'm going to do half a spoon. So this is a tablespoon, but it's a small one. Half a tablespoon of pecorino that gives a lot of flavor and makes it quite uh, salty. Yeah, salty. Okay. And again, these have to be uh, 
Yeah, it was a nice message from Maureen, and she was saying that she made wild garlic pesto that she found. Wow. That she and it was lovely. That'd be really interesting. Okay, and now I'm just adding uno e due di parmigiano, for sure, maybe the one, okay. You can even check the flavor and see what you like, but the right consistency of the pesto is when your mortar can stand without holding it with your pestle. Sorry, when the pestle can stand without holding it with your hand, that's the right consistency of your thick paste that we are going to mix to. The last ingredient, which is good quality of olive oil. Mm -hmm. If you use uh, um, uh, Ligurian olive oil, obviously they say it's the right quality. <laughs> but the flavor is quite delicate. In Liguria, olive oil is good and quite delicate, so it doesn't have to be a too strong flavor olive oil, but it has to be a good quality of oil. Okay, as you can yeah. see, now the pesto sticks on the pesto. Yeah. And if I leave it here, it stands, okay, it doesn't fall, and it didn't before, because yeah. it's dense and thick. And I have not crushed it, sorry, but I have, um, yeah, I, I didn't really pound it, no. but I've crushed it against the, the walls. Okay. Now, the last thing we will have to do now is just adding the good quality of oil, three mm -hmm. or four spoons of yeah. oil in quantity that will make it uh, last longer. You can keep the pesto that you've just made by hand um, in a jar uh -huh. with, uh, with oil for more than a week, for sure. Okay. Um, and otherwise, you can use it straight away. Diluting it with oil, it will mix better with the pasta. To stir the oil in the pesto, you should use a um, an how do you say, a stainless steel yeah, an aluminium spoon. spoon. Yeah, an aluminium spoon. And no, oh, sorry, now it dropped too much. Because if you use the wood, the, the flavor of the wood of the pestle could, um, if you're using really good quality of oil, the flavor of the pestle would uh, interfere with uh, the, your oil, the oil that you're using. So, Maurizio has told me how to use a, a spoon, a regular tablespoon, to mix the oil in, because otherwise the wood would interfere with the flavor. Okay, so now our pesto is ready. For sure, we don't have to warm it in a pan and saute the pasta with this warm, because the cheese would melt, mm -hmm. and uh, it would be obviously a disaster, because it would get melt and get thick. Mm -hmm. But we have to mix it to the pasta, draining the pasta with a bit of more water, more liquid, and that way we will um, mix it better and dilute the pesto and mix it better with the pasta and the green beans, which are cooking. Now I'll show you the green beans and the potatoes are here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to... And just, uh, Livy, just for anyone, in case, in case anyone just joined us and they missed that, so, so you're doing the very sort of traditional way of cooking, so you've got the water with the potatoes and the... And, this, and the, the potatoes, what was it? The green beans and the water. Potatoes and green beans, yeah. Salt. Now I'm going to add some of these trofie. I want to show you some. They are called trofiette. The right one are trofiette. Very little. Actually, I've learned how to make them. They're very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have a movement with your finger, with your smallest finger, quite, you know, difficult to obtain them. But I've learned how to make them in a town called Sori, where they've been invented. We have filmed it with pasta granis. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to add uh, one and two. Okay, this. Another kind of pasta that can, could be used to to make uh, trophy. Uh, sorry, to make to use pesto is gnocchi. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is boiling now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the gnocchi mm, that I would like to use, I would like to use maybe later if I cook more, mm -hmm. are these gnocchi that I've made yesterday at my Sunday lesson. Oh, that's so right. yeah. These are, uh, yeah, these are for the one that I uh, follow the rest. These are the one that we made yesterday. They are uh, uh, gnocchi made with ricotta and flour, mm -hmm. just ricotta and flour. They are typical from uh, Amalfi. They're called in Dundery, actually. And the best way to preserve them is 
boil them in water, place them in a plastic bag with some oil in it, and they will last a few days, even more in the fridge, and you can use them when you like, warming them a bit with a sauce. So gnocchi are perfect with uh, pesto, okay? even potato gnocchi. Can I ask, Livia, just quickly, so you're cooking with the, the pasta with the potatoes and the beans, that's purely what you're doing with cooking the pasta for a pesto sauce. You wouldn't do that sort of cooking technique for other kind of sauces. No, it's just used in Genova and mm -hmm. it's just used with uh, Genova pesto. So nothing else. Um, and you have it really if you have it in Genova area. So mm -hmm. it's a sign of being very traditional. Uh, for sure, there are green beans and uh, the potatoes maybe were added in the past to make a bigger amount. Mm -hmm. But anyway, if you go to the traditional place, they would serve it with potatoes and green beans. Okay. Mm -hmm. It gives it a special Did, uh, Judith just come on saying, yes, she was obviously with you yesterday and that's, she's going to have her, her gnocchi for lunch today. She's got a uh, uh, very good. You see, you can keep them here, use them whenever you like. Yeah. yeah, yeah so we, yeah, we, we had fun. We've done the lessons yesterday. For, you know, my lessons are always a little bit longer, but also the aperitivo lessons are fun. And we uh, I've sent you the new recipes. Oh, yes, so we, uh, yes, yeah, right. and so from Friday, we're doing new recipes. Yeah, remind yeah. me what you do again for the aperitivo. You're doing something with potatoes. I yes, <laughs> that is a picture. It's like, because um, I thought in UK you eat quite often potatoes. And I think one of these days we should do a lesson about how to cook different ways in different ways potatoes you know <laughs> ways that you would never think about maybe yeah. but this way is uh, on a stick inside the stick yeah. uh cut it into a spiral and then stuffing it with some cheese and some mm, flavored butter and cooked in the oven so very simple mm -hmm. you can hold it with a stick for an aperitivo and then we're going to make uh, mozzarella and carrozza so wow, it took me great. a long time to decide all these recipes because <laughs> I had to think about a mixture of different things that, you know, I didn't do yet and also new things that can be easily done yeah. there with ingredients that you can find. That's so nice. And maybe ingredients that can be boring for you because you find them all the time and you don't know how to cook with them anymore just yeah. to find new dif different ways to cook them. No, and it's, I think it's the same, isn't it? I think everyone's looking for new ideas and new recipes and just some new inspiration because we're all busy cooking away in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> that reminds me, if anybody's looking for, um, yeah, cookbook giveaway, um, please pop your name down in the, in the comments below. We're going to give me this cookbook. She says on the back, things to remember. This book has three main morals and I urge you to, to remember them and apply them liberally. One, salt your pasta water. I'm not sure you'd agree with that, Livia. Um, if in doubt, <laughs> and three, keep going. So yeah, a really lovely book, Midnight Tea <laughs> and a Coffee, just pop your name down in the comments. Kieran's man on Facebook, and he'll, um, he'll choose a winner at the end of the, of the lesson. So yeah, it's a nice one. Come in. Okay. Great. So meanwhile, I think I'm going to start with the, I start with the other pieces. It's a little bit more noisy because I'm using an immersion blender, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so I can do it without, you know, I just, We'll add the ingredients. You can see the image, but if you got something to say, maybe you don't. So, mm -hmm. um, rucola, rucola, about 30 grams. Walnuts, okay. Usually, walnuts got a stronger flavor, is less delicate than pine nuts. So, not good to make a pesto with walnuts. And you should not be uh, cheap with the amount of, wall, of uh, pine nuts that you use in the pesto, even if they are expensive. Mm -hmm because they make a big difference if you use a good quality and the right amount. In fact, mm -hmm. walnuts are cheaper and they are rough, more, you know, rough and they don't blend uh, easily. But also rucola has a completely different texture from basil. So that's why they are good together. So garlic, again, I'm going to take the green shoot out. Then I will place rucola. Then the walnuts, some salt, and then cheese at the end of um, adding some oil. And I'm going over there again uh, with the blender. <laughs> Are we allowed okay. to use the blender this time, Olivia? Is that allowed? Sorry? Is that Are, you allowed? Are you allowed to use the blender? Uh, that's, you know, the, the, in this case, let's say the, the leaves of the rocket are not as delicate as a uh, basil would be. So that's mm -hmm. why it doesn't create much problems you know like instead the basil is the problem in the blender because they are uh, easily uh, they become black change the yeah. color and the oil and doesn't don't come out properly because it's the heat of the engine or uh, 
the blade are not sharp enough and is bruised very easily. The, mm. the basil leaf. Can I say bru bruised? Bruised, yes, I have. Yeah, bruised. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm using terms that I'm not sure, but you have to correct mm -hmm. me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use something taller yeah. like this. That reminds me, actually, Olivia, you're doing an actually reminds me you're doing an aperitif class. I think is it next week or the week after, and you're doing all in Italian because we've got lots of guests who like to speak. Ah, è vero. È vero. Vero, vero. I, I've sent the recipes in Italian, in fact, I remember, yeah, I've, yeah, I've sent. We've got lots of guests that are learning Italian, so you're going to do an opportunity to do an aperitivo class. I think cooking, cooking and drinking, drinking helps a lot to speak Italian, I think, if you're yeah. studying it all. <laughs> yeah, Especially yeah, the drinking that. part helps a lot, everyone. So, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always happy. Why we do the lessons, um, usually, why we do our holidays, Usually, I always suggest to do an aperitivo in Italian if they do in ta Italian courses, you know, lessons. Everything. Because I think while we're having uh, drinks, is also good uh, to, <laughs> to, you know, really to, to start. Right, yeah, it's always... That's yeah. It. it makes everyone more fluid, let's say. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, so now I'm going to add... So the softer bits under, the harder bits on top, so that my blender will uh, take them better. I crush a bit. The walnut. Can you see it? Yeah, I have to move yeah. maybe the pesto out of the way. Okay. So and um, yes. yeah. Um, yeah, Julia was saying she made pesto with um, sorrel. That's interesting. It's another, it's another kind of herb, sorrel. Okay. With what can I not sentir? Sorry, because sometimes I don't hear well. With sorrel. You make pesto with sorrel. What's that sorrel? Sorrel. Oh, it's another kind of very popular. Okay, and so now I've had some oil because it will help me blending better. Sorry, mm -hmm. I might hear a little bit of noise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was quite. I will leave it a little bit more rough because I'm going to use it for a bruschetta. So, you know, and, uh, okay. I'm going to add now some parmigiano. Go the quantities mm. in the recipe. Okay, another good pesto that I thought to do, but then it would be um, with the uh, parsley. See, that's from Sicily, almonds and tomatoes. I need to blend it a little bit more. Um, but another good pesto that they usually do in, in Genova, but they use chestnut flour pasta with it, is parsley pesto. So it's made with parsley, garlic, and same ingredients, pecorino, parmigiano, and pine nuts, mm -hmm. but no basil. So, and it's a good flavor that goes well with chestnut pasta. So the flour mm -hmm. made. Um, the pasta made with chestnut flour, mm. um, okay, which is, is quite that, sweet. That, yeah, Liz is saying that in Italian, sorrel is acetosella. Ah, acetosella, okay. It's a weed, like a, no, come si dice? Yeah, uh, ho capito, yeah. It's a <laughs> white and, um, herb. Yeah, and, and Alison is asking, yeah. could, could you use walnut oil? Walnut for what? For the normal walnut. pesto? Um, just yeah, for any pesto, would, would walnut oil work in that one you're doing just now? The rocket, since you've got walnuts yeah. as well. Yeah, walnuts are completely different flavor. I think with basil is good pine nuts, and be generous with them because but they make a big difference. Yeah, but, but could you use the walnut oil in with that dish just now? Because you've got the rocket and the walnuts with the walnut oil. Ma, the I never seen a walnut oil, so I'm not sure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I think a good quality of olive oil is always the best. Uh, yeah. You know, olive oil is delicate. I don't know, walnut oil. You see now, actually here, you got the oils of the walnut already mm -hmm. in uh, the pesto. Okay, it got a similar thickness, I think, at the end. It's the yeah. uh, consistency down here. Okay, I will show you how to we spread it on a piece of bread. Okay, oh, it's nice. time for me to drain the pasta, because otherwise <laughs> well, we'll be the overcooked. And we just, yeah, and we just do a last shout out, because we're almost ready for um, anyone like cooking, but please just pop your name in the comments, and we'll pick a winner at the end, which would be great. 
and you'll get that quick book to get you inspired. You, um, when was the last time, Livy, you were in, in Liguria? Allora, I was in Liguria in September. In, um, yeah, because we were with, uh, with Pasta Granis, we have filmed uh, um, someone making chestnut pasta, chestnut trophies. Okay. So they call trophies, trophies, anything that have uh, the shape, uh, similar shape yeah. to this. Yeah, they can I make it also with chestnut. Yeah, I have to yeah. confess, Olivia, I've never really had much success with chestnut, chestnut flour. I just find it quite, um, it's a funny taste. I never really, I remember years ago, we made a chestnut cake in Lazio 20 years ago, and it was just a funny flavour. Yeah, it's quite sweet. So you have to, for sure, use a mixture of chestnut flour, because there's no gluten in the chestnut flour, yeah. so that makes it good for uh, people that cannot eat gluten, but uh, for sure you have to mix it with some other kind of flour, the rice flour, if you are gluten intolerant, uh, mm -hmm. otherwise with some of the normal, and it's quite sweet. So that's why a pesto with, uh, um, with bar uh, parsley should be good in uh, the chestnut flavor, with the chestnut flavor. Okay, yeah. so you see I didn't warm at all the, um, the pesto. I've just mixed it to a more liquid and uh, I didn't, I drained the pasta but I left it a little bit more wet, let's say. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm going to place it in the dish. Mm. It looks lovely, Livia. Oh, it's the usual Monday. We're all starving. Even Jane's saying she's starting to feel hungry now as well. <laughs> well I'm sorry. I'm glad that that you are enjoying it. I hope you've <laughs> learned the things about it. And I've, I hope to have inspired you like I was inspired by the person I've learned it from. And mm. um, also inspiring you to go to, to Liguria and maybe Lorne, we should mm. run holidays there, maybe. Huh? What do you think? Do, I'm, I'm coming over here. <laughs> okay. Maybe we good. should do the holidays over there. <laughs> Too. Yeah, so this is the pasta and I can spread the other pesto on the bread. I will take it here. Yeah. I'll take it here. So. Yeah, okay. You've got lovely tulips in here. A few comments about your really visto. <laughs> Yeah, life is so sad at this time. You know, so it's quite difficult. I always have to stay home that I, at least I want to try to make my house, yeah. Yeah, my mother house, a little bit more bright. Mm. <laughs> ecco qua. So it's good also in a bruschetta. You should warm mm. the bread before and yeah. then um, serve it. Uh, don't oh, warm the pesto, but warm the, brus warm the bruschetta. Delicious. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. <laughs> um, and what we're going to cook next week, Livia? Ecco, that <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, well, either another sauce for for pasta, or we could ask what they would like yeah, to learn how to do it. We, I was waiting to do more um, spring vegetables later when it will get. Well, here it seems like it's spring already, but for you, snowy and cold. So maybe we should do something from the cold weather. Maybe we were thinking about doing ragu sauce. You know, let's see who win. Let's see who requests. Uh, the most interesting dish, and then we will post it. Right, see what we get. So yes, please pop, pop a note to yeah, what, what you'd like Livy to cook next week. Yeah, yeah it is Sunday. I, uh, on Sunday, well, I have my lesson, which is now the vegetarian one, and then there is Carla. No, who, who is doing the lessons on Sunday oh, usually? Yes. Carla's cooking, actually, yes, he's talking about spring and sunshine. Carla's doing her cooking lessons yeah. on Sunday, so yes, anyone who hasn't okay. joined Carla yet with her Sicilian recipes, I think she's got new recipes yeah. too, actually. There's a well, I, I talked to her, I talked to her yesterday on the phone, and uh, um, we were talking about doing these lessons on Sunday, which is keeping yeah. us a lot of company. And I did, did, did was she online today? Uh, did she say yes, something? I no, I saw, I saw, okay. I saw yeah, Carla's there. So Ciao, yes, Carla. So yeah. on yeah. Sunday, we are busy doing the same lesson, so not the same, the, the same time, so that's why. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I think we should vote for Ragu, Olivia, maybe for next week, potentially, potentially. And Kieran says, at ah, the winner is Sue. Sue's one too, has won the cookbook. That's great. We'll get that off to you in the post. That's great. Hopefully we can see what you've cooked as well. There's a couple of people now who've won cookbooks, so no pressure. 
Minette, no pressure, Suzanne, to see what we've been cooking for your cookbooks. Pop us some pictures, let us know. Oh, oh Minette's saying chestnut, chestnut meringues. Hmm, that's interesting. Chestnut meringue, Mar meringa. Mar Mar meringa. Ah, interesting. Know. interesting. Great. Listen, thank you very much, Livia. I think it's Ragu next week. Enjoy your week. Um, thank you, everyone, for thank watching. You. Hope you're all well, staying cozy, and take care. And um, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye. 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 -bye.